Hi, today we're going to be talking about the respiratory system. The objectives are external and external gas exchange, the functions and structures of the respiratory tract, uh, how oxygen and carbon dioxide are carried in the blood, uh, word parts, prefixes, suffixes, and roots, and disorders of the respiratory system. So phases of, the, of respiration. You have ventilation or breathing, external exchange of gases from the lungs, and internal exchange of ga gas in the cells. The respiratory system is made up of the following structures. Let's just follow some air down through the nasal cavity or the uh, oral cavity down past the epiglottis. You have directly behind the nasal cavity, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, the laryngopharynx, the vocal cords. Altogether, the structure is known as the pharynx. Down further is the esophagus, which is carrying food down into the stomach. Behind the trachea, trachea carries blood into the left and right lungs. Those bounce further down into the left and right bronchi. In between the lungs, you have the mediastinum. And here is a blow up as things get smaller. As the bronchi uh, branch further and further, you end up in the with the alveoli, the smallest sacs. These are covered by the capillaries coming from the heart via the pulmonary circulation. That is where the exchange of CO2 from the blood and oxygen from the atmosphere into the red, red blood cells takes place. So the function of the respiratory system is to provide oxygen and eliminate carbon dioxide. It works with the cardiovascular system, which we've studied to accomplish this. And the external gas exchange, once again, is between the atmosphere and the blood. The internal gas exchange is between the blood tissues, the blood and the tissues. This is going over the thing that we just did on the drawing. Air enters through the nose, goes past the sinus cavities, down through the pharynx, uh, which includes the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. And here is the pathway. Once again, nares or nose, sinuses, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveoli. The right lung is slightly larger and has three lobes. The left is smaller and only has two. The outside of the lung is covered by a, a protective sac called the pleura. There is an outer or parietal and inner or visceral pleura. We've seen this before when we were looking at the circulatory system. The difference here, blood is coming out of the right ventricle and get a drawing tool here. Um, so blood is coming out of the right ventricle and into the lungs into the pulmonary circuit this is an alveoli with oxygenated blood coming in co2 is exchanged out o2 attaches to the red blood cells and head back to the left ventricle Okay, these are the roots for the respiratory passageways, roots for lungs and breathing, which you will want to be familiar with, and suffixes for respiration. So please, I just kind of click through those. Stop on those and take as long as you need to learn all those before advancing. Okay, let's take a little closer look at the larynx. 
Here we have the epiglottis, which prevents food from entering from the digestive system into the lungs, into the trachea. You have the hyoid bone, hyoid bone directly below the epiglottis. Thyroid cartilage right in front of the thyroid gland, which we will see in uh, the not-too-distant future. And cricoid cartilage directly below that. And the trachea has these C-shaped rings around the front of the trachea and is open. Uh, they don't close all the way around the trachea. So ventilation, you have inspiration or inhalation. The phrenic nerve is the nerve that stimulates the diaphragm to contract. And the chest cavity enlarges and the air pressure causes air to be pulled in. When you expire or exhale, the breathing muscles relax, lungs return to the original size and air is forced out. So it seems kind of counterintuitive that inspiration is a contraction of the diaphragm and exhalation is relaxation and then the diaphragm goes up into its shape, U shape and pushes the air up and out through the mouth and nares. Normal rate of respiration is 12 to 20 breaths per minute and this is, is regulated by the autonomic nervous system. Here you have the diaphragm down below during inhalation. The diaphragm presses down and air moves in to the lungs that way. And in this case, during exhalation, the diaphragm moves up, relaxes and moves up and presses air up out of the mouth. So oxygen attaches to hemoglobin in red blood cells. That is what carries the oxygen. And when it gets to the cellular level, that is when the oxygen is released. Uh, carbon dioxide is carbonic acid primarily. When it is attached to the hemoglobin and the amount of carbonic acid is what regulates the blood pH, which if you will recall is normally around 7.5. Four. Ooh, that's sad looking, but 7.4 is a normal pH. Here's some key terms that you'll uh, be exposed to, but you want to be comfortable with and know what they um, go with, the structures they go with, and what they are describing. So clinical aspects of respiration include um, it can be affected by resistance to airflow and uh, the chest can not be able to expand properly. It can be caused by infection, injury, allergies, aspiration or inhaling something besides air into the lungs and cancers. So we're, we're talking about the pH of blood when you're alkaline or alkalosis, there's too much carbon dioxide being exhaled. And this is when you hyperventilate, you induce alkalosis. Acidosis, and when there is not enough carbon dioxide exhaled, and this is caused by hypoventilation or a low breathing rate below that 12 breaths per minute and the blood gets acidic in that case. As you age, tissue will lose its elasticity everywhere, including in your lungs and become more rigid, less able to expand properly and certainly less able to fight off infections. Our common diseases include asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, lung cancer, pneumonia, tuberculosis, rhinitis, sinusitis, 
upper respiratory infections or URIs and influenza. Let's take a look at pneumonia. Pneumonia is a general term that can be caused by different micro microorganisms, not just one. You can have bronchopneumonia, lobar pneumonia, when it gets deep into the lobes of the lung. And it is a leading cause of death in people who are unable to fight off the pneumonia infection. And uh, tuberculosis is caused by the bacterium mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, it's one of those things you'll be getting tested for before you go out on rotations. Call it the PPD test to see whether or not you have allergens to mycobacterium to tuberculosis in your system. Influenza or common flu, H1N1 generally, it is viral and the common cold can be caused by such viruses as the rhino, adeno, and coronavirus. There it is right there. Uh, but the one we're dealing with now is a highly mutated form that looks like it came from the wet markets in China, uh, started in bats, mutated, and spread in pangolins. And after um, moving to both those species, it, uh, it came its current virulent form that's uh, going through the, the human population. So emphysema is when the alveoli or the sacs at the terminus of the bronchioles, the walls between them break down. You have a lot less surface area to give efficient gas exchange. So CO2 and O2 aren't exchanged properly. And cigarette is the main thing that causes the emphysema. And it is one of the COPDs or chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. You can see this nice spongy, healthy material out here, but then the wall is breaking down in the middle here in emphysema. Sorry about that. Um, let me just start over here. So it's narrowing of the bronchial tubes. The wheezing is by the uh, constriction of the bronchial tubes. And edema or excess fluid will end up uh, collecting in the bronchii and mucus will also move in. Again, dyspnea or shortness of breath and cyanosis, or if you remember, cyan or blue coloring. Uh, from not enough oxygen being moved out in the, ox the gas exchange in the pulmonary system. Uh, pneumokinosis is chronic irritation by dust particles. That can also be uh, other things, but mining and stonework is when this happens a lot. You can have specific dusts causing uh, that pneumokinosis. There is silicosis anthracosis for coal, and asbestosis from the asbestos. So lung cancer is the leading cancer death. Cigarette smoking again. So if you are a smoker, stop. And once it uh, gets a foothold, it generally metastasizes very rapidly with a low survival rate. In the premature infants, you have respiratory distress syndrome. <clears throat> There's not enough surfactant. Surfactant is the things that lowers surface tension and allows easy uh, expansion of the lungs so the mucus isn't too thick and there's not enough surfactant, there's just uh, the lung uh, mucus is too thick and you can't get good gas exchange. Cystic fibrosis is hereditary, caused by a flawed gene um, that is affecting how well chloride component of uh, sodium chloride is able to be transported across the membranes of the cells. Of the cells, when it, this gets interfered with, the secretions get very thick. This is a perfect environment for bacteria to infect the lung tissue and um, 
that is the main thing that happens in cystic fibrosis. And then from that, there's a whole cascade of other issues that happen. SIDS or sudden infant death, generally unexplained, usually caused, usually occurs during, during sleep. Anecdotally, it seems that placing the baby on the back helps. You want to keep uh, a smoke-free environment for the child, a firm baby mattress, and keeping the baby from overheating. So pleurisy, if you remember the coverings of the lungs were the pleura, usually with pleurisy, there's an infection that sets in um, to cause the problem. And the pain is can be very severe, severe with every breath because when the, <clears throat> the covering of the lungs are inflamed, every breath is going to cause it to press on the nerves. And between the layers, those two layers of the pleura can have other conditions called pneumo, pneumothorax, emphema, hemothorax, and hydrothorax. So if you know your prefixes, this should give you some idea of where we're heading with those. So let's take a look. So here we have a picture of the pleura. Here is the outside the outer pleura and the inner pleura and then this is the pleural space right there between them okay <clears throat> so now we know what we're looking at um the hemothorax is when there's blood in that space hydrothorax is when there is water in the pleural space You can diagnose respiratory uh, disorders by all of these radiographs, CT scans, MRIs, uh, bronchoscopies, and remo removing pleural fluid with a needle and thoracentesis to see what's in that pleural fluid to see if there is a causative agent. And you can look at arterial blood get classes, gases to see how well the blood is exchanging the CO2 and oxygen. You can look at the carbon dioxide, the oxygen, uh, the bicarbonate, and of course the blood pH if it's getting too acidic or too basic. Now, pulse oximetry is when they're talking about oxygen sat that saturation, you're using pulse oximetry. And pulmonary function tests um, produce a spirogram, which shows how well the lungs are functioning in all of these different ways. And you can see total lung capacity is with a complete exhalation and uh, forced inhalation and a forced exhalation. And then all of these other are volumes in between. Another one to keep track of is the tidal volume is just your normal inhalation and expiration. So here are some more terms to be looked at. Returning back to, let's take a look at pneumothorax. We did hydrothorax, hemothorax, uh, water. Hydrothorax is water in the pleural space. Uh, hemo is blood in the pleural space. And pneumothorax is accumulation of air in the pleural space.
Again, we're looking for that test for tuberculosis. You'd be getting a PPD test. That's called the MAN2 test. And you get that uh, antigen injected and then examine it 48, a uh, couple, three days later and see whether or not your body has reacted to it. And here is all of the abbreviations. COPD is certainly one to commit to heart. The rest of them are pretty self-explanatory. We hear about a CPAP machine to help people who snore. That's continuous positive airway pressure. It's basically keeping a little flow going in to keep the uh, nasopharynx open to prevent the snoring. DTAP. Way back in the day, I uh, worked in a lab that was coming up with an acellular pertussis vaccine. It had been cellular prior to that, but now the standard is the acellular pertussis vaccine. You can ask me more about that if you're interested. Not terribly interested, but interesting. Okay, so let's look at a case study. Uh, during uh, her examination, AD had a moderate to severe results in the following tests, the FEV, FEV to FVC, FVC ratio. So let's look at the abbreviations of FEV and FVC. Forced expiratory volume is the volume of gas exhaled with maximal force within a given interval of time. So the time interval would be forced expiratory volume over one second, FEV1. Forced vial capacity is the volume of gas exhaled as rapidly and completely as possible after a complete inhalation. So more, yet more abbreviations. Uh, certainly PCP or pneumocystis pneumonia is one you'll see in HIV as an AIDS defining infection. And so as we're going through COVID, there's SARS or severe acute respiratory syndrome that was making its way through the population a few years ago. Okay, and last but not least, at URI or upper respiratory infections. And that is all we have today on this subject. Thank you very much for your attention, guys.